go whenever you're ready. All righty. Um, I don't interview often, so we'll just jump right into this. Who the hell are you, anyway? <laughs> I'm Brian Lamb. I am the uh, director of the Learning Technology and Innovation Team, uh, which is part of Open Learning at Thompson Rivers University. And how long have you been around the ETUG scene? I remember seeing this question in advance and I was trying to remember. I first came to British Columbia to work in the field in 2000. And my recollection is, is back then there was an entity that was uh, something like eTug, and I don't know if it was called eTug at that time, but pretty much I've been part of the scene that is now eTug for about 17, 18 years now. Well, pretty much since the start almost. What's one, one thing you really love about the work you do? Well, I think it, it's one thing I love about the work I do is that it's constantly changing. It's, there, there's, there's nothing you can go into this year and say, well, this is exactly the way it's going to be. You know something's going to come along that's going to challenge you. Somebody's going to do something really interesting that you're going to want to incorporate. Um, and I just love the, you know, you deal with people that are both technically oriented and skilled, creative, and often have really interesting subject interests as well. So you just, intellectually, it's incredibly diverse. Um, and what do you like best about eTug and its activities? Well, one of the things I love about eTug is that there's an expectation that when you, for example, are presenting or putting a session together that you're going to put real thought into it. Uh, you see very, very few, um, you know, just PowerPoint uh, straight up presentations for 45 minutes. You just can't get away with that at an eTug. The community there is going to expect to be engaged. They're going to expect to be uh, given the opportunity to participate, not just receive. And one of the things I really love too is, and it's about the community in general, it's not just at the events. There really is, uh, we're, we're not competitors within the province. I, at least within education technology, I really feel like we're a network of collaborators. And there's always kind of an implicit open invitation to participate in whatever it is that's going on. Um, and in my experience, it doesn't exist everywhere. And it's something I noticed right from the beginning here, and I still think it's there. So describe your perfect team meeting. Well, um, last Christmas, we did have one that involved tequila, ceviche, and uh, other Mexican foods, and that was a good one. Uh, so I may have to incorporate that into more meetings in the future. Uh, I may not be strictly allowed to do that though. I will say uh, one of the things that uh, I've really valued was about a year and a half ago I took part in a Liberating Structures workshop and I've been making an effort at at least some of the team meetings to, because we have as you know like 20 to 25 people at these meetings, to really generate uh, conversation from everybody. I've found a number of the liberating structures techniques to be really helpful to frame a problem and then make sure that we're really drawing on the expertise from everybody in the group and not just a few people. So I'd like to be uh, thinking about ways to not just have tequila and ceviche but also you know incorporate more liberating structure techniques to uh, you know frame and, and uh, um, optimize our conversations. And what makes the Learning Technology and Innovations group different than any of the other tech units in the province? That's a good question because we try to incorporate at least elements of what we see the other groups doing really well. Um, I think the one thing though, I mean, uh, the, the majority of the people uh, on the Learning Technology team here uh, are dedicated to the work with open learning. And open learning is a... Um, is a wholly online or wholly distance operation. Um, so that is kind of the majority of our day-to-day -day activity is dedicated towards people that we'll never see in a classroom. But one of the really fun things about the last year or so has been thinking about ways to take that expertise and technical knowledge and capacity and try to extend it into something that'll make our on-campus on uh, community more engaged and and to you know extend the services we can provide. Sure. So we're going to tax the memory again. Do you have a favorite eTug memory? I have so many, and and you 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 gave me a preview of that question. I've been thinking about it a lot. Um, you know, one really recent one that comes to mind is when Audrey Waters, who's like you know one of my absolute heroes in the field, and I think just you know an unparalleled thinker, was 
brought in as a speaker, which says something great about eTug in, in itself, and then having Jason told DJ in her talk. So not only did she come and give an awesome talk, but she did something that she's never done anywhere else. And just, I remember being part of that group, and I remember later in the day, too, there was just some absolute madness happening with some sort of interactive activity. I'll dig up some video on that. But as cool as that event was, um, a very special memory in my heart was when um, uh, a few of us that were involved with DS106 Radio, hat tip to the great Grant Potter, um, when we were kind of really in the full flush of enjoying that, and uh, there was an event in Nelson, an ETUG event in Nelson, and we actually crossed the streams with the uh, Kootenai Co-op radio people there. That was super fun. Um, do you have something you would like to ask ETUG members or something that you'd like to get them thinking about? Well, I have to say, I, I find what comes out of the ETUG community is so frequently the most some of the most interesting and dynamic kind of teaching and learning techniques that I see anywhere else is um, I hope and I know some of the people in the community do this but I hope in a broader sense the kind of stuff that happens in eTug we can think about ways to extend the kind of energy and openness and uh, spirit of collaboration you know beyond our learning technology hives. Um, do you have any special interests and hobbies? Well, something that has occasionally overlapped with eTug activities is I love playing music. Uh, our just departed uh, inspirational guru, Erwin uh, DeVries, uh, and I have made a lot of music together over the years, whether with breaking band or various jam sessions at the sanctuary. Uh, and I've jammed with so many people or made music with so many people uh, at eTug. So yeah, I, I, would, I would point to that. Okay, and um, kind of an open-ender now, is there anything you would like to share, anything at all you'd like to share with ETEP members? I just hope they keep on keeping on and uh, keep their feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. And if I have any other uh, cliches with the word keep in it, I'll think about that too. Sounds great. Well, thanks for sharing a few minutes with the ETUG members. Okay, so I don't know if you've picked up on this, but I have combination skin means it's very dry on the cheeks and very oily on the, on the, on the forehead. So, so anyway, keep that under mind. And I really, really hope you do a better job on this makeup than all the other pre-interview prep I've been subjected to so far. I wanted coffee, and yes, thank you for bringing that coffee, but it was cold, and I don't know what you filtered it through. I mean, there's a certain level of preparation and uh, professionalism I kind of like to deal with in my day-to-day -day work. You know, it's something I bring to the job every day and I just kind of would maybe like a little of that in return. I'd just like to maybe have somebody meet my standards for once. Sorry, no, we lost our production assistant. Yeah, well, we, I suspect we may be losing a few people soon too, but I'm gonna let that sit for a while. <laughs>